And still on the coup in the J, there's mountain pressure on the regional body to explore all options to resolve in the standoff, but jettisoning the use of force contained in ECOWAS resolution. The sanctions imposed on the landlocked West African country are already being implemented, and it's having a biting effect on border towns between Nigeria and Niger Republic. In this report, TVC News State House correspondent Femi Akonde uh, tells us about the plight of the people in Jibia, a town that shares a border with the Niger Republic. The impact of ECOWAS sanctions on Niger Republic is taking a toll on residents along the border towns between the landlocked country and Nigeria. Already there is growing tension in these communities as they count down to the expiration of the regional bloc's ultimatum for Niger's coup leaders to restore the post President Mohamed Bazoum or risk military intervention. Jibia shares border with Niger Republic. This town that seems to be enjoying respite from attacks by armed bandits and terrorists is now facing an economic meltdown. And that could get worse if ECOWAS continues to tighten the noose on the neck of the military coup plotters in Niger Republic. Gide Mohamed is the chairman of GBA People's Forum. His transistor radio is now a good companion as he listens to news and developments on the standoff between the military in neighboring Niger and ECOWAS. He is worried that the coup plotters have called the bluff of the regional bloc and are willing to damn all consequences. Not in support of this situation. And they are there too, they are finding it very difficult for their lives to, 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 it has affected their lives and all ramifications. Yes, it has affected and they are crying because you know Niger, uh, they depend uh, almost largely on Nigeria in terms of the economic uh, uh, condition. Yeah. It depends on Nigeria. So in this closure, people are finding it very, very difficult, especially in all aspects, especially in terms of food, in terms of other uh, social or uh, 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 essential commodities. Yeah. They are finding it difficult and they are crying and they are not in support of this uh, condition. They are here in Jibia open markets, most of the food items sold are brought in from the Niger Republic through the land border. Inside this market, it is hard to tell who is Nigerian or Nigerian, simply by looking at their faces. The ties that bind Jibia to Niger are stronger beyond the shared borders. Already, Traders here are fast running out of supply, and a food shortage is imminent if the blockade imposed by ECOWAS is not lifted. We will soon lack food to eat. Even people are beginning to lose jobs. There are young people engaged in transporting goods, loading of vehicles, and even carrying goods from one place to the other. The border closure has pushed them out of jobs. We do not want any problem between Niger and Nigeria. We are one people. Trucks carrying food items and other commodities from Nigeria to Niger are stuck here in Jibia and cannot proceed until the borders are open. Some of the perishable food items may go bad if they do not get to the final consumers in good time. I met the leader of the Traders Association in Jibia town. He fears that the military option to resolve the standoff in Niger Republic will completely destroy the local economy in the border towns. We want the president to look into the matter and seek an amicable resolution. We do not want war in Niger. Whatever affects Niger will affect us too. We all feel uneasy around here. No one likes war. You only know the beginning but not the end. At this cattle market in Jibia, the whole place is scanty. The sellers are idle and there are no buyers in sight. 
They bear the consequence of a military coup that pushed out Mohamed Bazoum's democratically elected government in Niamey, capital of Niger. The once vibrant and bustling cattle markets is now a plague. Many people come to this cattle market to make hands meet. Suddenly, the old value chain around the market has disappeared. We want a political solution to the military standoff in Niger. It is possible. Crossing from Nigeria into Niger through the available illegal routes on the porous borderline is risky, but we dared the odds. At some point, our guide warned us against filming our journey through the bush paths as it could spell doom. Not long from his advice, we were intercepted by the Nigerian soldiers who ordered we return to Gibia. Ties between Nigeria and Niger Republic dates back to pre-independence era. But now this Siamese twin relationship between the two West African countries have been separated by this barricade. Until ECOWAS sanctions are lifted and this barricade raised, the movement of people and goods through the border will remain prohibited. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Gibia, Katsina State. Femi Akode joins me live now from another border town in Kasina State with Niger Republic. Femi, you spoke with residents uh, in Gibia yesterday who are concerned about the economic implication of shutting the borders and its attendant food shortage. What are stakeholders where you are talking about what Nigeria should do this time? Uh, Lee Femi, stakeholders are greatly concerned about the impact of these sanctions imposed on ECOWAS. Well, to a great extent, a lot of them understand that it is not Nigeria, it is ECOWAS. But you know, Nigeria is the biggest country, the biggest economy in ECOWAS, and they feel that Nigeria should be able to prevail on ECOWAS to drop some of these sanctions, to open talks with uh, the uh, military coup uh, plotters in Niger Republic. Because, like they say, uh, Niger Republic and Nigeria are one people. What exists between them is just a, a political border. You know, these people are connected by marriage, uh, trade, and a whole lot of things connect Nigeria with Niger Republic, especially on the northern flanks of Nigeria. You know, there are about um, seven Nigerian states that border um, Niger Republic. Niger Republic is a uh, landlocked, and a lot of our uh, commerce happen between Nigeria and Niger Republic. There's a thriving inter-border trade along these uh, axes. As we speak right now, the prices of food commodities have gone up. We are hearing that uh, a bag of rice that used to sell for about 30-something thousand naira now sells for as high as 50-something thousand naira around the border community. Immediately, that sanction was imposed. You know, this is just an example of... Uh, the impact, uh, the biting effect of the sanctions that is being felt in these border communities. They fear that, well, if this continues for another week or so, there will be acute food shortage in uh, the region and this can lead to uh, a very big crisis, not just on the Nigerian side, but also on the Nigerians, Nigerian side because pressure is also piling on the coup plotters in the Nigerian Republic to uh, open up and talk to the Nigerian government and see how uh, at least uh, things will be made easy for their people who are also feeling the effect of these sanctions. So the idea of these sanctions is to get the junta to renege and also restore democratically elected government in Niger. But President Nubu, we understand, met with five northern governors yesterday who share borders with Niger Republic. It seems government may now uh, may have found itself in a very difficult situation given it, the economic impact on this community's family. Yes, indeed. It's a, a very tight situation for the Nigerian government, looking at the economic impact of this. Everyone has been put on their toes. Uh, government officials, especially security agencies along the border lines have been put on their toes. Right here in uh, Mayadwa, we have seen uh, the DSS, the civil defense, immigration, custom, working in close synergy to ensure that they enforce 
and comply with uh, these sanctions imposed by ECOWAS. But they also understand that it's biting really hard on the people of um, Nigeria, all Nigerians as we speak. And we believe that that is what uh, these governors who, share, who states share borders with uh, Nigeria Republic might have come to tell President Bola Tinubu to also uh, encourage him to look for other options, explore all options. What they are saying is that the military option should be taken off the table. They want the government to continue with all diplomatic and political uh, options that will eventually bring a solution to this standoff with the military coup plotters in Niger Republic. But we do not know for how long the coup plotters will be able to hold out because as it appears, some people are saying that they are getting support uh, from the local population there in Niger Republic. They have also received restricted access uh, to countries like Nigeria and Benin Republic. Uh, citizens of this country can no longer go into uh, Niger Republic because they consider them as non-friendly countries as we speak. But they are able to a large extent ramp up support from the local population to stand behind them and also uh, stand against these ECOWAS sanctions. What uh, they are saying is that the military government there in Niger is for the people and will implement policies and programs that will be for the benefit of the people. They're asking that ECOWAS gives them that benefit of doubt, just as they did in uh, Mali and um, um Mali and Burkina Faso, where the coup plotters were asked to come up with a transitional plan. What they are saying is that maybe they should be treated uh, in the, with that same, uh, they should be treated the same way as uh, Burkina Faso and Mali. But we are expecting to hear from ECOWAS what their next line of action will be. Nifemi. live for us in Mayadu in Kasina State, a border community with Niger Republic.